Hi everyone, welcome to another video from Crafty Terrain. My name is Lee and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made Echo Base for our Hoff Table uh, for Star Wars Legion. Okay, let's get into the video, hope you enjoy. Okay, so what I'm starting with here to build Echo Base is some insulation foam. It's quite a thick foam so I need to cut this up. Uh, and I'm going to stack this up and I've got my, this is going to be the blast door 3D printed foil that's going to go on the front so I want it to come at least to the height of this so I'm going to start by making a cut straight down the middle along here um, and then I'm going to stack it up and that will give me the height that I need okay okay so I have it cut into three now and I'm sort of just going to stack it and stick it like that and then the idea is to contour these hills in here and make all this look like mountains and we have an ion cannon on the top here but what we need to do next is stick all this together and this stuff here decorators chalk it's called in the UK really really cheap you can pick these up for about a pound a tube and they're really good and they hold the foam um, what you want to do by starting off is just score with your sharp knife into the foam like so and what that's going to do is going to give that something to grab and I'm going to do that on all three levels and then I'll come back and show you sticking it all together. So now in your uh, corking gun just add a nice stream of the decorator's chalk across all the areas and then you can just press down onto this and it should grab it quite nice. I've used this stuff hundreds of times when making terrain and I've never had an issue. Always sticks really well, always solid. Stands the test of time. Take your first piece, get it into position. Once you push it down, you can slide it around and move it to where you want to get it to. So you're happy. I've got myself a little lift this side that I'm going to use to build in a rock face and stuff. And then repeat the process for the top layer. Again, just piping it on nice and thick. And then just stick your top piece on however you want that to go. So if you've got any hanging off the edges, just use your finger and just run it along them edges. That'll help bond it in place even more as well giving you a solid seal and now you've just got to leave that to dry now um, 24 hours is more than enough you can just be a few hours and, it, and it's fine but if you've got the time I'll just tend to leave it overnight so I'm going to leave this overnight and then I'll come back tomorrow and finish off okay everyone uh, this is fully dried now look at that it's rock hard it's not going to go anywhere uh, the next stage is to mount it onto a base and for that I'm going to be using 6mm MDF wood. Um, I've already cut that out and I've painted it. I've got a smaller one here from other pieces of terrain that I'm uh, working on for Hoff. And as you know guys we like to look after our wood at Crafty Terrain so I've varnished and painted uh, this. So I've just used a white house point paint it's a matte emulsion you can get like 10 liters for like 10 pounds from a hardware store beveled the edges of my base and rubbed that down with sandpaper so it blends in with the board and then i've just used a rattle can um, varnish that's nice and cheap that'll help protect it and should stand the test of time um, so make sure that all your, your pieces fit and you've, you've measured your bases right and stuff just use the marker pen to go around and then all we're going to do same process on the back side use your sharp knife to just make indents and that will help the um, bond the glue that we're going to be using the decorators chalk grab a little bit better so just go over and just use the knife to just twist little holes in or draw lines or whatever you want to do just make sure that there's something to create some sort of contact and grab okay once that's done take your decorators chalk and it's the same process just go all over like so so you can have a nice bond and it's not going to come off this MDF remember guys it is important when you build terrain that it lasts you know you can do things cheaper by all means um, but sometimes I think if you're using it for wargaming especially it's better to spend a little bit more money a little bit more time and build it properly and have it last then you build a piece and that after a few months uh, 
it starts to fall to pieces or like things start coming off it and stuff and then over longer periods of time things can warp like bases and stuff and it just doesn't look good um, so you can see how much I've put on there now we're just going to flip it over and then just push it down remember once you push it down you can slide it around while it's wet and just get it into the exact position that you want and then we're just going to leave that to dry I've left myself a few centimeters either side around the base and that's going to allow me to apply snow and ground materials and little bits of rocks and anything that I want to do later today. And all you're going to do is let that dry and then we'll come back and we can start to build in. You all can see that I've started to put the shape in already but we're going to build that shape a little bit more uh, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to add the rocks to this face here and stuff. Okay. Okay so what we're going to look to do now is make our markings for where the door is going to go and stuff like that. So we want the door here on the front the blast door um, it's a 3d printed file just place it into where you want use a marker pen sharpie and just mark around the edge so you know where it's going to go so you don't make any cuts into that area and once it's painted up I can attach this later okay so there you go you can see where the uh, door is going to go and I also want to mark where I'm going to be putting my ion cannon which is around like the back sort of thing here on the base I'm going to cut that out so it can be embedded in then once it's marked up we want to just sort of start adding some texture before we apply the filler and the rocks so just take your sharp um, serrated knife again and then just sort of just start to like cut into the rocks basically and build that gradient up however you want just be careful not to cut into where you put the door um, go around take out all the squared edges sort of thing and make try and make it look as realistic as you possibly can okay I'm gonna get this done and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we're attaching our rocks to the piece okay so what's next is I'm going to show you how I'm going to be making uh, the rocks that we're going to be sticking to the rock face so I have a mold from Woodland Scenics and we're going to be using plaster of Paris just to uh, get these poured and then they'll dry hard and you've got your own rocks uh, this is a real cheap way of making rock faces because I think this kilo of plaster of Paris cost me like a couple of pounds which is great um, so get yourself some water in a small bowl and then you're looking to add the plaster of Paris and then just mix it in like you're making like a, a gravy or some type of adhesive or something along them lines just mix it so it's all blended into the water and what we're looking for is a thick consistency that you can still pour so it doesn't you don't want it to be too runny but still you've got to be able to pour it so go like a spoon or two spoons at a time Okay, that's getting there. Just keep mixing. It doesn't take that long to dry either. It takes about an hour and it will go rock hard in the mould. You can take it out and use them. A bit more. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I might just add a little bit more into that and then we should be there and done. Perfect. So if we just bring that closer and show you how we put. It's not too runny, it's not too thick, it's still going to be able to pour. Okay, then what we're looking to do now is just pour into the rock mould. I'm just going to give that a minute to settle and then I'll come back and show you how it's looking. Okay, so when we pour, you want to pour from, don't pour too close, pour from a decent height. That'll help the um, air bubbles come out of the mix. And then you just pour and fill each uh, like space for the rock. Just drip it into the corners. 
look so doesn't matter if they overlap a bit this stuff snaps like quite easy so just fill each uh, mould like so If you miss any bits just go back fill it in that's three small ones here and wooden scenes do lots of different mock rock, uh, rock molds you don't just need these uh, little ones they do lot big rock faces and all sorts as well so you can ch check them out okay so that's looking good I'll give that about an hour to dry now and I'll come take them out and show you uh, how the finished product looks. So they've dried fully hard now and then to just pop them out just bend the silicone mould back like so and then as you can see you're left with a nice looking rock mould um, you can break off these extra edges there around um, just so it fits on nice and neat and don't worry if they snap either look see how that one's broken um, it all comes in useful because you'll find you'll have to break them to get them to fit onto the piece that you're looking to put them on as you can see they come out quite nice and easy that's the largest one there and that is nice and hard within an hour Next stage is to get them put onto the actual uh, rock face. Okay, so what we're looking to do now then is attach our plaster of Paris rocks to like the slope surfaces and to the front of the uh, base, okay, and build like a rock face. It is all going to be covered in snow, so I've looked at a few pictures of Hoff and um, the hills and stuff. I just see some of the rock sticking through, so that's the look that I'm going to go for, so it doesn't need to be like 100% covered. Um, to attach them on, we're just going to be using our decorator's chalk and just put some of the uh, onto the back of the plaster. And then just stick it into place really uh, pick where you want it to go sort of match it in and then just force it down if you'd like I said earlier if you do have to break these up to piece around and fill in any gaps then by all means you can and you should get a nice looking rock face at the end of it like I'm gonna break this bit off there keep all the little bits that you break off they come in useful and then just start building up how you want it to look So they just go on the stick on like so and then it, when you've got your little gaps you can just put little pieces in like that there stick a bit of the chalk in and then just stick it down you can smooth out the edges and then when we come to fill all the filler on to make it hard um, after that that's when you can apply the snow and we'll get to that stage so I'm going to go around and just keep adding all these pieces breaking them up and sticking them to all my rock faces and then I'll come and show you how it's looking okay so as you can see I've uh, stuck the rocks on now and they're looking pretty good again not 100% coverage uh, but that's okay because we're going to be using snow on this afterwards so you won't see all of the rock anyway the next stage now is to cover this foam with a mixture of wall filler and white glue and that's all mixed together at the bottom of this pot it's called spackle in um, the US but we call it wall filler here in the UK easiest way to do it guys just get some on your finger and get messy just rub it onto the foam and just spread it out to get a thin layer covering all of the foam okay and then this will allow us to paint this afterwards because the wall filler is nice and porous so the rocks they just soak up the paint really nicely this also protects the foam as well okay um, so it will draw nice and hard try and push it in between the rocks so they blend in so they all look as one another good thing about this um, wall filler is it's nice and cheap as well so you'll be able to protect your piece and it won't cost you much money at all. I mean, I bought a tub of uh, this size in wall filler and it cost me like £4.50 and the white glue is nice and cheap also. Just spread it all out, get a nice thin layer. Um, I wouldn't spray paint after this, even though it does protect it because you will have some gaps still and the foam will 
still be exposed in little bits and areas you don't want that foam to melt okay so I'm gonna go around get all this on and then give it a couple of hours to dry and then we can finally get some paint on the piece okay we are back and uh, all the fill is dried now it's rock hard and I've given it a very light rub down with sandpaper just to remove some of the hard edges and all the little bits that stand up and break off our next stage then what we want to be doing is painting all of this grey now. Um, the reason doing that is that's going to cover all the rocks and then we're going to hit it with a dark wash to run into the recesses. Dry brush it up a little bit and then we can add the snow okay. Um, I want a grey obviously to create a bit of contrast between the uh, snow and the rocks. So this is basically just white house paint and I've mixed in some of this um, black acrylic cheap paint I've got two pounds for that whole tube got it from the craft store um, and you don't need much black at all uh, to turn the white to this sort of grey just use an old brush and then just go over the whole mini cover all the gaps don't let any white show through on the rocks it shouldn't take long if you use a decent size like paint brush it goes on quite nice it's always satisfying when you start to get a bit of colour onto a piece. Uh, it starts to give it a bit of life and realism. So I'll go around, I'm going to paint all this on and then we'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to put the wash on. Okay, so painted it all grey now and then what we need to look to do now is to add the wash and um, for the wash all I'm using is the same black cheap acrylic paint heavily diluted down with water. As you can see it's sort of do that to the side of the pot you can kind of see the thin consistency we're looking for and all you're going to do is just brush this all over the piece and this will help run into all the recesses and all the gaps and darken it down and then we'll be able to dry brush this back to a lighter color afterwards okay just brush it all on i've put a plastic tray down to protect the work surface just because this does get a bit, a bit messy and it will start to go everywhere and just move that around so it goes in all the gaps and this should be nice and dark as well if you want to lighten it up you can just add more water and it will go a bit more transparent if you want to make a dark wash just add a bit more paint okay i'm going to go around get all that done so the wash is dried now and it's looking pretty nice uh, what we're going to do is start to dry brush the rocks back up now I've had a little bit of white to our base colour mix that up get it on your brush and just brush it off on some either tissue paper or card well, if you've got old cardboard go with that I'd say just because you're going to be brushing a lot off so, so there's hardly any left on the brush and then we're just going to just if I tilt this up so you can see just go over the tops of the rocks okay just to add a highlight to them and it will just help with the contrast which is always nice go around the whole piece do this and let that dry and then have a look how it looks and then if you want you can add a bit more white in um, and go up one stage lighter I'm not sure if I'm going to do that because we're going to be putting the snow on this and I want to have a real nice contrast between the grey and the white um, snow. Okay, so I'm going to go around get that done and then we'll come back for the next stage which is going to be sticking on the door and the ion cannon. Okay, so with the dry brushing done it's starting to look like a rocky like mountain base sort of thing. Now the door is going to go on and this is, I've painted this door up with before I've done all the dry brushing obviously because it would have been messy and that's probably the best way to do it and then we're just going to look to put the door on the front and then this ion cannon, these are 3D printed pieces and the ion cannon is just going to go on the back sort of thing there so we'll just push that forward so you can see and hopefully it will look like echo base once these two pieces are on to attach them i'm just going to be using the good old trusted decorators cork and again just apply this to the back of the door nice thick layer so it can press up and it's going to seal real good and not come off Okay, walk that little bit off there and then all you're going to do is look to just hold that in place where you want and then just push it up so you get a good seal 
I didn't go right to the edges because I didn't want loads of it to push out around the sides. And I'm just going to push and hold that down now. I'm going to hold it off camera so it seals uh, nice and tight. Back in a minute. So it's all stuck together and I've started to add some snow so you can sort of see how it's looking. Um, basically all this snow is is baking powder, uh, white house paint and a bit of PPA glue. You sort of get it into this kind of consistency. If you can see that. And then all you're going to do is just pop this on and push it down between the rocks and just let it mould in. Use your fingers so you can get it into all the areas that you want. And then just push it on. It's really is simple to use. Make sure you do put white paint in, otherwise baking powder and PVA will start to yellow over the time. Um, you can also add a, add a bit of matte varnish if you've got some, just like house interior matte varnish. If you want to see me make the snow, if you go and watch the um, crashed airspeeder video that I did, you can see me make it in that video. Okay, so I'm going to go around now, finish this off, put all the snow on, and then we'll come and have a look. So the piece is fully covered in snow now. I've added a bit of snow to the iron cannon and the front of the blast doors there, and it looks pretty nice. Uh, one finishing final step that I like to do is I'm just going to give it a coat of this paint factory cheap matte varnish. This is um, when it's a spray. So when you spray it, just spray it from a distance of about a foot and a half. If you get too close and spray it, it will dry very shiny. It won't dry matte, basically. It dries more satin sometimes even close to a gloss so make sure you keep your distance with that can um, I'm gonna go and spray that let it dry for an hour and then we'll get a table set up and we'll have a look how the finished piece looks next to all the other scenery that I've been working on as well so I've set a little table up so you can see how the finished piece looks it's really nice I'm very happy with how it's turned out. If I show you what else is on the table, there's the uh, downed air speeders obviously this is for Legion but there is a video on how I did them and it looks real nice on the board with everything on. We also made this little Wampa cave as well. All the techniques that I've used for the Echo Bags is how I've done all these like rocks and stuff and all the snow and all the uh, light cover like areas around there. So very happy with how it's turned out. I'll give you one little final look. And there we have it. Okay, so that completes Echo Bags. Really happy with how it turned out. The half table looks amazing. If you haven't seen that, check it out in the uh, Legion Battle Reports. It's the semi-final of the Christmas tournament. If you've enjoyed the video, leave us a like, consider subscribing. Any questions, get down in the comments and we're happy to help you out there, guys. Take care and stay safe.